Howdy guys, Jake here today with a shore dive off the east coast of Florida. The day started off pretty silty, but it's like tide approach, it got a lot clearer when the dust settled. First find for today was this capped off PVC pipe. In the beginning of the dive here wasn't too much going on, just kind of going through rocks looking for life. Couldn't really find too much. Just crawling around looking for shells or anything cool. Last time I was at this spot I actually found an entire fishing rod and a horse conch shell. Now I would miss the lifeless wasteland I was crawling through when I actually saw a fish actually gave me a pretty good spook because I wasn't used to seeing small living things starting around. So end up having this little baby yellow jack that found me. He actually ended up following me throughout this entire dive and even on the way in. It's always nice to have a friend though, so I didn't mind his company. Water's starting to clear up a little, looking for shells around these rocks, starting to see a little more vegetation too. Hoping I'm actually coming up on some fish here. When I pop my head out of the water here, I see somebody looking through the water with their fishing rods, trying to find some fish, give them a little helpful advice. You're looking for fish, they're not here. They were definitely in the wrong spot if they were trying to catch something today. So I had to swim a pretty good distance before I found the first schools of fish. Got that little baby sheep's head in the bottom. Big school of pork fish couple Bermuda chubs in the background. Out of nowhere, it's just an explosion of reef life. Another big school of pork fish, which I recently found out were illegal to harvest. So I see this shadow in the water and end up taking a dive. I thought this was an absolute dinosaur of a snook. It was just some piece of debris. Still got all the pork fish swimming around. The swell started to pick up as the wind picks up. You can see it moving the sand around on the bottom. Somebody lost the dive ladder off the back of their boat you saw there. It's starting to get really cold in the water too, so my breath holds are just going down the drain. I end up just doing a couple more dives, looking around to see if there's any fish I'd like to shoot before I head back in to warm up. Then I instantly come out after like 30 minutes in the sun. Water's starting to clear up here, getting a lot less silty. That pretty reef fish on the right. So this is my first dive after warming up, coming back out. I already saw a couple sheep's head, but they were all undersized. I see this big guy in the top right. He swims off, and I just slowly move my pole spear to get it in front of him. If I move too fast, it'll scare him away. Wasn't sure if at this range my pole spear would go through his skull, so I went for a bit of a fleshy part of him that I knew it would go through. End up landing it. Now this is the part where I'm going to stab the fish in the brain and bleed it, so if you're not too into that I would skip forward about a minute. So stabbing the fish right behind the eyes puts it out of its misery. You'll see him tense up here and then fall flat. Rather not have them sit and suffer on the end of a spear. Now my fingers are honestly quite numb at this point, so I'm trying to figure out how I let go of him without dropping my knife and everything. It's hard to feel through the gloves. And I also felt him jolt again, so just gave him another stab in the brain to make sure. 
Got that little Jello Jack following us around still. Next, I give the fish's gills a good rasp with the knife. A lot of blood is located in the fish's gills, so stabbing them, taking them out, gives you cleaner fillets and also less blood while you're filleting the fish. Here I'm going down to put them on the stringer so I don't lose them. And once again, fumbling with it with my cold hands. I go to put it through his gills and I think about all the rocks I have to climb over to get back to shore. So I put it a little more secure through his eyes. It's got the entire skull as a backbone. Right here, I'm just admiring the formation of the rocks. Got these arches and hoops and crevices, just quite beautiful. Also, getting really cold at this point, too, thinking about heading in. On the way in, I see a spot where I think I'd find some mangrove snapper. Go ahead, dive down, look underneath this ledge. It's just a bunch of baby margates. Didn't even see one mangrove snapper. Just kind of looking in the hole to make sure I'm not missing anybody. Heading in, we still got our friend following us around. Just chilling under me, it's covered from the sun. Holding my pole spear and flag, and I see this really beautiful shell. I'm sitting here trying to fight the swell, trying to get to it. And after this, we go ahead and cut to me at home, filleting the fish. So the way I fillet fish, you just give a nice cut behind their head. Some people do a real sharp diagonal to get over the rib cage, but small fish, so I'm trying to get as much meat as possible, so I go just above the rib cage. Then I like to go in on that cut and just feel down the backbone. Constantly I'm just poking the backbone with the tip of the knife, just working down. When I'm far enough down the fillet, I just go ahead and push through to the other side and just get all the tail meat. Next, I'm using the real sharp blade and the knife to release all the meat from the backbone and the spines. I'm also going to sit here and fight with the rib cage for entirely too long. Keep working it though. Get probably as much meat as possible off this fish. And it's exact same process for the other side. Usually when you can see light through the other side, you know you did a good job. See the shadow of my hand down there. Now, I don't live by a dock, so my fish crocuses, they go right by my banana trees. Got some bananas growing in here, so just keep them even healthier. Go ahead and bury those up so it doesn't smell like fish. Now we move on to the cooking part. Whenever I bring home fish, I always gotta give the tax collector some of it. We're going to just salt and pepper the fillets after we pat them dry. Patting them dry is probably the most important part. Use your own judgment for salt and pepper, it's not really hard to judge. So all my fish usually gets cooked up the same way. What I go ahead and do is either red pepper flakes or when I have them, some fresh chilies. So this is a guajillo and an arbol chili. Arbol chilies are super hot, so this one little tiny one can go a long way. Let's go ahead and chop those up. Be careful not to chop your fingers off. Tonight I'm making tacos, so I'm throwing the tortillas on some heat. Almost dropped it there, but I managed to catch it. Warm tortillas just give a nicer mouthfeel, and also pops them up, gives them a little crunchier. Next we're throwing, I don't know, two tablespoons of butter into the pan. 
see the pan's nice and hot, just kind of spread that around, get all the butter melted. Then we're going to toss in our pepper flakes. If you don't have fresh pepper, just red pepper flakes. You can see the oil instantly start coming out of them, turn everything nice and orange. Gonna go ahead and give that a little stir, and then very shortly after, add in some garlic to also get the flavors of the garlic floating around in the butter. Now, when we add our fish, it's important to remember to drop them away from you so you don't splash hot oil onto you. Cleaned up the bloodline a little bit, so got a couple spare pieces. Now for fish, I usually do two minutes on the first side, flip it over, minute 30 on the other side. It's not hard to overcook fish, but it's pretty easy to undercook it, and undercooked fish it ends up being quite chewy. So two minutes one side, one minute thirty the other, and here you can watch me flail around trying to flip them. Friendly reminder after touching anything pepper related to wash your hands before you touch your eyes, nose, or any other sensitive orifices. Fish is done here, so I'm going ahead and putting it on a plate. Gonna separate it later with a fork. And I had some carrots on the back burner. Just boiled them to get them a little soft. Then toss them around in here so they can pick up some color and some of the flavor from the oil. After tossing them around and getting them coated, I come in with a little bit of honey. It's just going to help some of the flavors stick to it and add a touch of sweetness to it. It's important after you add sugar that I go ahead and kill the heat, take it off the heat even, and just start moving it around. Now comes the part for plating. I have some rice and beans I made the other night. I really hope you guys don't need a tutorial on how to make rice and beans. Put a nice little layer in the middle there. It's going to act as a bed to put our fish on top of. Went ahead and just flaked up the fish. If you cook it right, it should flake real easily. After this, come in with some green onions I cut up. It's going to add a little bit of earthiness and a little bit of freshness. I always put lime on my fish to give that citrusy sour flavor. Helps cut through the richness in the oil, but we were fresh out of limes and I was too lazy and too tired to run to the store. Even though it still looked and tasted absolutely delicious without limes.